Good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Alfred Zollinger. Uh, I'm Assistant Professor of Interior Design here at Parsons and a co-organizer of this symposium. Uh, I have the great pleasure to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Claudia Youngstraw. Uh, the first time I saw a piece by Claudy, I had a very visceral reaction uh, to it, I must say. While I had been somewhat aware of her work, it was not until I saw her installation at the Cooper Hewitt uh, last year that I fully got how powerful her work was. Um, raw, strange, thick, and beautiful all at once, and so powerful that it stayed with me for days. The next time I encountered her work was in a visit to, with some students that I made to the uh, Maharam Studios. There on a table were laid out some of the finest and most exquisite uh, fabrics uh, designed by uh, the great designers in the last uh, uh, 50 or so years. Uh, but it became clear right away that the, the fabrics and the textiles that the students responded to were really the ones by uh, Claudie. And it was with great pleasure that I watched the reactions on the students' faces as they learned more about her and her work. And it was then when I realized that we should bring her here uh, tonight uh, for the symposium. Claudie's most recent project here in the US uh, I think is at the David uh, Rubenstein uh, atrium at Lincoln Center. It's a collaboration with Billy Ten and uh, Todd Williams and a project we were able to visit uh, with them a couple of days ago. It was during the presentation there um, that she explained that she switched from fashion uh, to making textile in installations because in her words uh, she worked, uh, she was much too slow uh, to work in fashion. And uh, as she was saying that, uh, uh, she was standing there um, picking a piece of uh, Dutch landscape uh, that had embedded itself into a piece of felt that she was holding. In other words, a, a piece of dirt uh, uh, somehow gotten stuck in uh, one of her sheep. Um, I think Claudie really gives new meaning to local and slow. And while I'm fully aware that not all of us can or should move to the country and raise sheep, um, I think she really expands the role of designer and artist in wonderful ways. Claudia Youngster was trained as a fashion designer, but became under the spell the felt in 1994 when she saw a Mongolian yurt on display. Youngster quickly mastered the process of felting and started to make fabrics combined with other materials like silk. Her extraordinary range of innovative textiles has attracted has attracted attention worldwide and resulted in commissions from leading fashion designers, museums, architects, and government bodies, companies, and individuals. She works in an autonomous and sustainable manner, and while controlling the entire process from raw materials to end product, including the use of natural dyes. Since 2009, Youngster also keeps her own Hortus botanicus, where national historic varieties of dye plants grow. This youngest division of her studio is engaged in innovative cultivation. She has been awarded many times for innovative work, such as recently the prestigious Dutch Award for Applied Arts and Architecture, the Prince Bernhard Kulturfonds Prix. With Cloudy tonight is her director of strategy. I think that's the best translation we were able to uh, figure out, Marlene Ekbersen, who has worked with her for the last 10 years, helping facilitate her artisanship. Marlene has background in museum studies, and before joining up with Claudia, worked for over 10 years with the Association of Dutch Designers. Please welcome Claudia Youngstra and Marlene Engberson. Hello, my name is Marlene Engberson and uh, this is Claudia Artist. I give a short introduction and then Claudia will tell more about the, the felt and the process and what we are doing in I'm doing more the, the explanations of the projects we're doing with architects, so the, the, the realistic projects, and she's focusing on inside the processes. Um, some things are already mentioned by, uh, by you, but uh, of course I have to repeat some, uh, some stories. But Claudia was indeed uh, educated as a fashion designer, and uh, she works in the fashion industry for several years, but after some years she was thinking all these collections four times a year, always this rush and always this waste in, um, I have to stand, 
the rush in uh, all the collections and also the waste when it is fashion, it's fashion and then you throw it away when it's not fashion anymore. So uh, this was a hard thing for her. So in, uh, in a while she was uh, going to an exhibition, she saw a yurt, a Mongolian yurt, and she was so astonished by the fabric, the felt fabrics, she tried to make her felt on her own. She did that, and uh, because she was a fashion designer, she had a, a, a lot of knowledge of this fashion uh, world. So uh, immediately her fabrics were uh, recognized by uh, big artists like Donna Karen, John Caliano, and also uh, Christian Lacroix. We worked with Christian Lacroix for a beautiful piece in his show. And um, she was also uh, recognized by people of the movie of Star Wars, The Phantom of Menace. So she made the costumes of... Uh, of the Star Wars uh, JD Warriors. Of course, that gave a lot of uh, PR, uh, and that was uh, not bad in the beginning of your uh, career. What, in the, what we are focusing on in these 10 years, or 15 years she's working on felt, and 10 years we're working together, and we're trying really to build up an oeuvre, and we have a strong vision that we try to, to, to give to people and to, to to uh, expand and it's about, uh, we do product design like carpets and rugs and, and, and curtains and hangings and shears, but we also do very strange things, uh, very big things, very strange things. This is a, a room for the mayor uh, in a city hall. We're doing very sophisticated things like uh, this is the, pri uh, the room of the prime minister, in our, it's our White House in the Netherlands. Uh, he's living here and he's receiving here the politicians from abroad. It's tapestry, silk on wool, and we're doing uh, very international things. So this is our last uh, international uh, project, the art installation in the Lincoln Center together with the architects uh, Todd Williams and Billy Chan. Our company is uh, based in, the, in uh, the Netherlands, in the north of the Netherlands, and like we, a little bit like Rembrandt, we have an atelier where we are with eight people. This is the design team. and. Uh, at the end of this uh, talk, you can see that we did a, a, a big work in these 10 years. But uh, to work very hard and to focus on the work is uh, very important for us. But of course, we want to laugh a lot. And we have a, a joy to make all the fabrics and to manufacture all the things and to work together with the architects and the people and the fashion designers, etc. A very important inspiration uh, for our company is nature. Um, yeah, the colors of the nature, the, the structure, the, the forms, um, all the richness, the beauty in nature that we try to translate in, in, uh, with our innovative skills in new fabrics. Here's an image about coloring, about re the red matter. We will tell you, uh, Claudia will tell you a lot about it. We try and we, uh, we boil and we cook and we do and we work and we try and uh, we try to innovate and we um, mix things together, raw materials, new ideas uh, and the alchemy has to take place. That's what we are trying and that's what we are focused on uh, all day. Uh, that there's something happening that is more than you could expect. Um, so that's really our thing. To, to search for something. And um, we're struggling together. Um, and Claudia has already won also awards for her very innovative uh, uh, mind. We're doing big projects. Um, textile um, is something, can be something difficult. It's not painting, it's not uh, murals, it's not, uh, it's not uh, stone. Uh, textile is, is soft, is... is um, um, it, it's difficult to place sometimes um, in 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 a spectrum of art or in, in spectrum of of architecture. So um, we with these images we want to say um, it's it can be big, but it's also very uh, technical. It's a very technical process. It's um, sometimes it's big. That's why it's uh, complicated. But we have to make the felt. Uh, upside down, so it's uh, that's also so complicated. Felt shrinks, that's also complicated. You have to make a lot of measurements and technical uh, uh, drawings to, to realize for you that we make patterns uh, one by one, often. Um, it's a really very logistic process. Here's a fabric in the countryside. 
what we try to reach. And it can be very high and uh, we need uh, installation people. Um, so this is rather um, a, a big thing. So we are always supervising the installation. This is the outside of that uh, big room of the city hall. Of course, we have a lot of recipes. Uh, Claudie will tell you a lot about it, about all the coloring, but we try to, we write down all the new recipes, all the new colors. We have hundreds of them. And um, so also our archive is uh, important. And of course, when you work with architects, you have to make renderings and you have to make maquettes. <laughs> and we try to bring nature <laughs> in interior. First, we think it's important to say what is felt. Felt is really a very simple thing. It's the oldest textile in the world. And this is, um, this is wool directly from our sheep. And this is the Drent heat. This is a typical Dutch sheep. And what I like most is that uh, making felt is so, so incredibly simple. You add water to it. Um, the fibers they go open and then by friction they attach us and this is a non-reversible um, process. This is a very very simple thing. You can do it everywhere. You need nothing, and um, um, this is this is where it starts with the wool. We put down um, the fibers in a pattern, and then. Yeah, you can in in this in this making process you can decide whether uh, uh, the forms grow. So in this first stages of the of the making of, it's very important. Uh, as Malin explains, we have an atelier, so we can see if somebody has had a bad day or how he's doing. So um, in our studio also, um, we are not allowed to make any telephone calls. It's totally concentrated. It's very quiet. Nothing happens there. There is not a shop in the in the village. It's 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 really really wildlife. Um, you see, it's growing of the patterns of the silks, very translucent, very delicate and um, many materials as Wensleydale, English sheep we're using. Uh, the installations are very big, sometimes we go really into the material because, I mean, um, um, it's, 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 it's necessary that you are very close to it and, and um, uh, like the Brancusi Atelier, I was there recently, it's, uh, it's really, we have no uh, complex machines only for production, the making of, the, 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 the mechanical part, but for the rest it's all handmade. Water adding to it. And then we have big pieces. It's a shrinking process. It sometimes shrinks 30 or 40 percent, and um, so you have to uh, to think about it before you make it. When you have figurative uh, designs, that uh, when you make a bird or a tree, that it also after shrinking, that it's really this bird or tree you wish. And then the comp the fabric finished, and making it clean, and then. We hang it out and it dries. And then we have our friends. This is the this is the most important part because without wool you, we can do, not do anything. This is um, this is the typical Drent heat. It's the oldest European race, and there are only a thousand of them left in uh, in the world. It's 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 really uh, a very tiny uh, sober animal. There is no meat on it, uh, so um, uh, not of any economic use. So they uh, uh, since 1900 it was it was completely disappeared out of our uh, uh, landscape. Also because we the of the introduction of artificial uh, fertilization and it's a beautiful beautiful sheep and uh, we use it really directly we have 200 of them and um, besides that they provide us the wool and uh, we uh, we we try to keep this race uh, preserved more important that they work uh, in landscapes they they really um, uh, uh, maintain in a natural way our landscape they work on the on the dutch dikes and they have this way of walking which is very uh, like this so the soil is 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 really tight so it's it's uh, it's it's not a crazy animal. It's important. So that's what we, what we, what, what do you think? It's, 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 it's this, this natural um, preservation. It's, it's for us. It's very important in our mission. Once a year, the sheep 
um, uh, take off their coats and um, that we often have people from Australia, they can do that very well and um, they keep also this, the, 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 the form of this fur, I call it fur, but the natural fur, they keep it in a beautiful sh shape. This is where we have our studio. It's really in the countryside, in Friesland, in the northern part of Holland. There is, it is really flat and you have lots of space and there is nothing. Um, from material to color, uh, a year ago um, we started our own uh, Hortus Botanicus. For many, many years we have been dying with, with, with vegetable dyes and for, for the people who die it's very important that they know what they are working with. So between these ateliers we have started our own garden. This is a, is a small garden with only like a hundred of um, different types of, of plants but just to show the variety and the inspiration but also doing tests and making really new recipes. It was just uh, finished last year, and even in a short time, many, many new, many, many uh, bees and butterflies already came back. So it was really like a paradise place. Working in the garden. Um, as I explained, everything has been done manually. Uh, we have uh, 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 we have a dyer. She's a woman, but she's very, very strong, and um, it's it. it it is important that it's that that you keep it small because then you can you, you can control the qual quality. You have to uh, connect to what you are doing. So we do it in a, in in many many steps. This dyeing process also. The colors are um, very. Yeah, you recognize the colors from 17th century paintings, for example. This is a color um, familiar use in the girl with the red hat. These are very old colors, and uh, many of them, you do not experience them in your natural environment anymore. That is colored with? Um. This is the matter. It's a Dutch, it's a carrot which gives the color, and it takes three years for them to generate and to build it up and to give. So it's even in this, in this growing part, it makes, takes a lot of time. And the yellow is with the wow, eh? The yellow is uh, weld, and this is a this is a, you use everything of the plant, leaves and uh, and the bust and and the carrot, and it's very sun depending. So uh, the harvest changes the color every year. So you have to adjust every time your recipe. This is our working space, and you see many color ranges in cochineal, wel walnut, weld. And we dye the fibers, so we never dye a piece, um, and uh, only the, the fibers will be dyed. But also, uh, you dyed with the um, Saint Jan's herb. Yes, we also dye with herbs for the Cooper Hewitt installation. We dyed with uh, with this herb, and we had a uh, we for six months. Uh, we did only tests with Saint Jan's wort, and um, yeah, we developed like 500 different tones in this coloring. So you 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 could live you could live your life with one <laughs> plant. <laughs> yeah. Drawing. The Dutch Just to give you an impression where we work, this is the design studio, housing, offices, so it's really out country and we are b building now a, a vegetable garden. <coughs> it's a small village, 200 people, and we have like a, like a, s a few b buildings in, in the street. So it's now the cloudy Jongstra street, <laughs> we call it uh, that way. Um, what is very exciting is that um, in a few weeks we are growing our own crops in these in this fields. It's a very very tough clay. It's the northern part of Holland, and this will yeah this will accomplish. I mean the the last the, uh, I mean then the chain is is completed. So um, for me it's important that that I know uh, where the where the materials come from, who is the farmer. Is it done biologically? So this is a plan we have, and we have now we rented uh, a few acres from far different farmers, and we're going to grow our own crops, and we do it on an experimental scale, like ten 
this year and see what is happening with the, the quality of the soil and also totally new you know, path of development for us also. But, I, but I'm very happy about it because then we have it all very locally and it comes really from, from, from the Dutch countryside. Yeah, and really try to be independent. Then yes. The chain is, is uh, with the circle is round, in fact, uh, with the sheep and then the, the ground. From natural heritage to a bit of cultural heritage, uh, spinning yarns. <coughs> These are beautiful hands spun yarns and you can make your own threads very um, uh, alive and making uh, them as thick or as alive as possible. It's laying down the, f uh, the silk fibers in a very um, yeah, poetic uh, pattern. It's all about uh, innovation, eh? old crafts, trying to, to experiment with them and to make new uh, contemporary art with these old uh, skills. So Not like this. Yeah, knotting techniques. We used a 17th century French knotting technique and we blew this up in the library of Amsterdam. We have really uh, re, re um, developed this, this knotting and putting out of context and really blowing it up and uh, making really a new fabric. Maqueterie, we have the figurative images we make. They were all been cut out by hand and laying in with the fibers. So we will have uh, like, uh, yeah, like a, like a maqueterie. It's a very complex technique also. And we have an enormous um, um, variety in, in fabrics, uh, more than hundreds of recipes, but we have no stock. We make it for the uh, client or for the architect or for the place, for the location. So um, it can be very translucent, it can be very tough, it can be very rock and roll, it can, it can be anything. Uh, and, um, so these are uh, just a wide scale of some fabrics to show the differences in appearance. Very um, sophisticated and translucent, the raw silk with wool. We call them landscapes, and you can imagine if you see them, they are landscapes, in fact. And the silk is always the shiny part, and the wool is more the, 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 the matte part. Azure. This is the maqueterie, first mm, uh, with a scissor knitted and then filled up with raw silk. And then our icon, of course, with the Drenth Heave, very recognizable. We always were in um, the Salone da Mobile in, um, in Milano for 10 years and uh, this was a fabric we, we uh, showed there. People could see it and touch it. It's very tactile, people want to touch it also. <laughs> and um, yeah, we, that's great. It's, it brings some uh, nice atmosphere and some softness in, uh, in, in space. It's a metallic organza on wool and they felt it well. With raw linen, felt it together. I'm going to tell you uh, a bit more about one uh, specific project since it also is uh, is here in New York. It's uh, Lincoln Center. We realized this uh, last year. This is uh, the design of uh, Todd Williams, and um, it's um, for me it was a landscape with big oval-shaped forms in grey and the background in yellow. And um, here it's where it started. Uh, Todd asked for a uh, gold. Uh, Todd and Billy Day requested really a golden fiber. So we we have never made a golden fiber. So it was for weeks a bit. Uh, it was really uh, exciting. Uh, I mean, uh, to achieve this color, and we did. It's this um, um, welt with a bit of this red over over it. So it is a very warm golden glue. Uh, yeah, shiny uh, uh, shininess gives it. So this is what we use for the Lincoln Center. Um, I thought 
for me it was very important that his background would be uh, uh, very dynamic, that it would be uh, like a big gesture, like, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that you could f um, go with your eye and, and, and not uh, been spotted on one specific uh, space. So I thought then, okay, we're gonna uh, blow up uh, the design one-to-one -one scale and we rented a big space where we really got into the um, to the uh, design and really walking into this 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 installation this is how it started um, the architects came over and uh, checking on, out on us if you're doing well but uh, it was very nice for, for me that they were there at uh, at the beginning of the process so there is a lot of uh, you can you can you can interact a lot and then I mean it has not been made yet so you can do a lot big big forms growing and growing every day so I was there for weeks in this in this uh, sports hall and um, developing this design and taking uh, uh, also distance because I mean it was it was really uh, difficult because there, uh, uh, finally it should be on a wall high and this is on the ground so um, um, it was uh, it was it was exciting. The design was finished and we made patterns of it, 30-40% bit larger because of the shrinking process. Every uh, panel of this installation, uh, I think 120 of them were, were taking coats on and then we began making the making of. Laying all the silk uh, fibers in, a, in, a, in this dynamic direction and um, um, we ma always make many pieces uh, just as a trial and take distance and see if this is really the handwriting you like. So before uh, a project is realized, there are like 10 or 20 pieces like this, tr tryouts really to see if this is what you really want to achieve and finding the, yeah, the, the real handwriting. One of the assistants, but she's, she, had a, she has a very delicate handwriting and she's, she's really fantastic. Taught, learning how to felt. <laughs> Here you see uh, already this this delicate movement. Like like it's like the sun. It's 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 like I don't know how you call it, gold leaf. Uh, it's like gold. Put adding water to it, and then this is a finished fabric. And then with the shrinking and with the uh, complexity, yeah. yes. This is how it's uh, growing uh, in, in accomplishment, and then what was, what was very important that these, especially with the oval forms, that, they, that the lines uh, were very straight. So we did a lot of restoration because with felt making, you not exactly know how it's coming. I mean, for you cannot control it completely. The labels for everything to, to for before the shipping, so that there will be no misunderstanding in the United States uh, which panel fits where. This here you see already uh, you give you a good impression of this uh, of the final installation. Big, big, oversized uh, uh, fabrics and uh, growing into one piece. Going there every day, seeing how uh, taking distance. We had very bad lighting, so you have to see like this and uh, trying, um, yeah, to make it that 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 the work has this this one big, f yeah, movement as a big air, uh, like a big paintbrush. That's what I would like. That it that this is what it f should feel like if you see experience this installation. The reducieringen, many many women, local women. Um, worked on hands and knees and making uh, little corrections to look it perfect. Details, very fine, um, like a paintbrush. And this is nearly finished. Then it was uh, shipped to the US, only the fabrics, and here it was installed, wrapped around uh, acoustic panels. Two of our people were there after last summer and uh, uh, helping out with the installation, with the wrapping and the, sh and, and the finishing of these, uh, of these panels. Here we can see it. And then there was the installation. 
and we supervise it. Eh? We, we have always people who are then at the location to supervise the installation and to help with all the details. This is uh, how it is now. We were there yesterday uh, evening with a, there was a free concert and I and I was there many times this week and I think what is what for me it's a very big success of this space is that it's so been uh, uh, taken uh, over by the people of New York. Everybody's going there. We were there this afternoon. It is fantastic. It's always crowded and you, it's very informal and people uh, working there and sitting there and eating. It's it's really, really a, a lovely space with the doors open today, with the natural um, atmosphere coming in. It was really fantastic today also, Todd. Super, yeah. So now we show some projects we realized in the past. This was the, the yurt for the, the city hall. It was together with Klaus and Kahn architects, Dutch architects. And it was a very big building, a city hall with a library, with a theater, with a cafe. And this is the room where you can marry, but also the room for meetings with the, the mayor and his uh, people. And it was all in blue indigos. And it was huge. Uh, it was a lot of uh, square meters. Together, this whole installation was like 1,500 square meters. And yeah. we had, I think we have produced that in, in uh, all together in six months. The tent, the blue diamond, the theater, and uh, another, another room. So this talking together and uh, about the project take, took three years. <laughs> It's always the same. So talking with the people and the architects and with the with the, the the clients and the committees it took three years, but to make it, it was only uh, in 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 two months, three months. Yeah. The inside, this is with the creepers also, very rich details on the outside, and in the inside, it's like a chapel. It's like a church. It's beautiful uh, at, in atmosphere. It's all kind of off white felt. And uh, they are placed like in a diamond with facets. And we worked with acoustic engineers because uh, the noise, uh, the, uh, the, the acoustics is very important because there are board meetings. And what also is, uh, yeah, is, is very important that it's like a trompe l'oeil. Uh, in that time, I took, the, uh, I took the liberty of putting in some really, really dark um, um, triangles because m when we were making it, it was all so terribly white. I thought uh, that it needs, it's, it's, at some point, it needs um, a, a different, uh, it, it needs another color, depth, and it, yeah, it, I think it's 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 worked out very well. But uh, it, this was in a rural space, uh, countryside also, the people needed a long time to adjust. And uh, I mean, it's really, it's very unusual. It's eight meters high, 12 meters length. And it's very strange also because you, there are no windows. It's, it's really like um, a you're in a, in, a sh in a shelter, in a big, yeah. big yurt, yeah. But it feels very comfortable and felt as one our own first cloth and our own first uh, living, in fact, uh, with, the, with the yurt. So uh, wool is a very uh, close material for people for, from ancient times already. We also did a, a, a room for events, for receptions or lectures. So we did art banners. They are very high, four meters high and one meter wide. Uh, Sixteen of them uh, were made. This is detail with the silk and wool, and you see the, the shiny parts and the, the, the mat. And the theater, it's an, at random uh, patterns, wallpapers uh, in several uh, Dutch matter colors, and then stitched to the wall directly in an at random uh, pattern. Very warm feeling in the evening. This is a project we did for a for a bank in Holland. You have we have one green bank, banking, and um, here we did. Um, these are uh, uh, conference rooms, and we have this translucent uh, pieces made. So you will see it um, uh, rather anonymous. This was a very uh, uh, nice thing because people were could walk through the stairs and then if there was a meeting with people they could look under the table and they could when the women were in meeting <laughs> they had some problems with looking under the tables so with this felt of cloudy you can exactly uh, <laughs> say where you, you don't want to be translucent so this totally uh, customized for the situation so this banner uh, 
uh, is there so that you cannot look under the tables when you uh, climb in the stairs. This is a restaurant. It's a project a few years ago and um, big, big tapestries, um, wall covering, full silk on wool. And what's nice about wool, uh, wool is a very uh, ancient uh, material, but uh, we did a study on wool, um, but wool is dirt repellent, wool is, has very isolating uh, qualities, uh, wool is non-flammable, so you can uh, use it very easily in uh, public uh, spaces. In Holland we do not do fire treatment uh, um, for the felt. It's not necessary in Holland for public spaces. Uh, we always bring the fabrics to the fire department and they do a test and then they say, okay, uh, uh, you can use it directly. Um, it's um, antibacterial, so you can... Um, you, wool has enormous qualities. They never reached smart textiles with so many qualities in one fiber. We, have, uh, we had a, a very uh, strange... Um, um, projects with an, um, this was a private people who wanted a ceiling by felt. It's a very high building. It's uh, it's a the architect was a not Dudok but an, uh, a student of Dudok, and it's a school building. They live in a school building in this gymnastic room. So it's very high. The acoustics are very bad. So we did the whole ceiling, 350 square meters of this dark brown felt with the long dread heave hair. And it, it, it makes it very cozy. In uh, it's a winter room there in the lower part, and it's the summer room in the higher uh, ceiling. So, this is the uh, Kunsthal in Rotterdam. It's a building of Rem Koolhaas. It's the restaurant, and this building is very tough and rough and not finished and uh, no small details. So the felt Claudie tried to make was also very strong felt with yak hair directly. Uh, uh, from the from the yak involved, it's a woven pattern and then felted into brown. This is the Dutch uh, library in Amsterdam. You see here a, a piece of a mock-up, and uh, here we use this this really exaggerated knotting techniques. And uh, it was a full covering uh, wall with the guipures on the right, and on the left uh, there, wa there was a wall which had be very very uh, strong quality because it's a public building, and I think yearly there are three million people coming into this building. And um, downstairs you go to the to the restroom. So everybody is going down and touching all these walls. So it had to be very, very strong and tight. What is very nice is that people now uh, making um, um, dreadlocks. Yeah, dreadlocks inside, and, and they're, they're doing. This is an interactive wall. They're doing <laughs> crazy things with this, with this, uh, with this material. And it, what is very, yeah, you you should touch it. There are no signs. Please do not uh, stay away. We like that very much. These are the knotting things I spoke about earlier. It was a lot of work. I mean, it was like uh, you need so many uh, threads and um, then dyeing them and uh, using them into the felting process. That's also difficult to, to teach your people because you, you don't want a thread that is very regular. We want threads that are not regular, that are very irregular. So you have first to beat the people, don't make it too regular. <laughs> and then you have to make them, uh, to force them to... to to go wild, but it's difficult to, that they go wild. It, it took, takes some time, so, but uh, uh, they're still in, in the company. So uh, We all also did the window lockers for the Lloyd Hotel. It's a hotel restaurant. Uh, it's also felt uh, aluminium lockers. You can close and open the lockers. They are very high. It's five meter, yeah. and there are 15 of them, and if you close them, it's like one Japanese uh, f uh, garden with birds and trees and coloring and very very refined and um, it was um, it is a wonderful project also because uh, yeah in in daytime you can close them whatever you want and it gives a lot of intimacy in the evening. This was done with the maqueterie, eh? uh, all uh, in cut late, out yes. and then filled in with the raw silk dyed with the natural. Uh, at the ground floor, we had to make a translucent uh, curtain. Um, so this is in the same atmosphere, Japanese feeling. 
This was a project recently, uh, last year, in a theater in, uh, in uh, the Netherlands. Um, we worked uh, uh, before with this architect and he had uh, also great confidence. So we were given the wall and make really uh, a theatrical piece. And it's like a, also like a wallpaper, very, uh, um, uh, the backing is very uh, smooth, so you sh it is attached uh, directly to the wall. And um, we use very, because the building is, is, is it's an old um, uh, fabric, and um, we use a lot of raw materials and only very little coloring. It's really in relief, eh? the, yeah. the, the wool of the Drenthief is coming out of the wall. You, it's really a, 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 a powerful piece, very dynamic and um, yeah, has a strange power. We do also meeting rooms or VIP rooms. Uh, this is for the ministry in Holland with silk on wool. It's a beautiful fabric, uh, difficult to photograph. Um, but also hospitals. We have been asked several times for hospitals or uh, places where people need quietness or comfort, wanted some comfort, because the fabrics are so soft and, and tactile. Uh, they can humanize uh, the, 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 the location. This is done with uh, camel colors and off-whites, and people feel better now. We have mails from the people working in this hospital that people feel better. It was uh, the users in, in the used for, uh, on earlier stage. They used only glass and steel and aluminium. And when they brought in some fabrics, it was uh, um, yeah more comfortable, comfortable. Also, a hospital, uh, another hospital um, with fabrics and a beautiful piece at the end of the of the. Corridor, you know. This was a corridor leading to the. This, this was the hospital for cancer uh, therapy, and this was a corridor, I think, uh, 30, 40 meters, and it's leading you directly to this treatment uh, cells. So, th and the, this this wall was steel, and it was really, uh, yeah, very it, hard. It yeah. was really inhuman. So we had. <laughs> We had covered this wall, and I mean, it's it, it, people do it. It 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 really brings you down to another level. And that's what we try. We want to try to touch people, or to inspire people, or to make them uh, feel better. We we this is a good example. We we did a show at Moss uh, for years ago already, but then uh, we got mails. Uh, there was a woman from the Katerina uh, New Orleans um, Orcane. And uh, they had nothing left. Their house was uh, down and they had no things at all. And after a year, the husband of these women said, OK, I have to bring you to New York. You are so depressive. Uh, please, we, you have to go out. And then they went to New York and they went to see the show uh, occidentally. And then uh, she was seeing all these fabrics in the Moss show. Um, and um, she was really um, yeah, touched by the, by the softness of the, 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 the fabrics, but also the coloring. And, uh, yeah, and this, I, I think, uh, for her, this Japanese uh, figurative style. And uh, that was the first time that she could think, OK, I have to move on with my life and uh, do, uh, try to uh, get more uh, power again. Uh, so we get meals uh, from people. It's, uh, it's very strange what it does with, uh, with, with, with with them. We like to hear it, of course. This also was a ho not a hospital, but... Yeah, this was a... Uh, yeah. This was a... Sp this is a place, it's a kind of hospital where uh, young women live. They have uh, been... Uh, they are 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. They have really, really uh, bad history. This is the last space where they can go before they go to youth. Uh, 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 how do you say that? Yeah, criminal. Uh, yes. Jail or... Uh, and um, th they uh, had... They, they have really uh, had s sex problems with with lover boys. I mean, this is very very. Uh, Tough. It's a lost this lost place where they where they uh, people trying that they uh, yeah get on another track. So they asked me for this uh, for this installation in the entrance hall, and I worked um, uh, days with these uh, young girls, and it was very. Um, um, it was, yeah, for me it was the first time working with them and I thought, I mean, we had this material with us in coloring and they had really something like, they do, didn't want to touch it, only the very, very soft and white uh, silks and um, 
uh, at first they didn't, I mean, they are not used in, in, in to tactility. It, it was, it, you could see it, yeah, they were not used. And then in days we made together uh, fabrics and uh, then they, they, uh, they grew. I mean, they had made something for themselves. It was really wonderful. And um, I'm v I was very happy doing this because it's a beautiful project and also involving um, these kids with what you're doing and not making an abstract work and doing your thing, but really with them um, making, I mean, uh, getting something in, 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 in a movement. And that was it. But this was a very nice project too. <laughs> <laughs> Something a very different perspective. Different. Yes. Yeah. This was the. Uh, this was. A, this is the White House in the Netherlands. This is the room of the the building where the prime minister lives. And we did two rooms, and we did the tapestries because Jokunen is a very uh, important architect also in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, he's Rijksbouwmeester. I don't. Uh, it's difficult to translate, but he's the most important architect for that moment for years. So all the governmental buildings will be done with him. And um, he thought it's a very old building, it's a 17th century building, but we have so much talent in Holland. Why don't we uh, do something contemporary? Uh, so um, they asked uh, four artists, and Claudia was one of them, for two rooms we did only tapestries, because at that time people had gobelins, and in the winter they pull out the gobelins from the uh, boxes, and then in the summer they were rolled up and uh, you had another room. So we made this gobelins tapestry, they hang loose, and it's very uh, chic. Uh, when you walk in, the fabrics are moving also slowly, so it makes a very sophisticated atmosphere. Beautiful paintings, of course, uh, on, the, on the walls. It's, for us, it was strange to have paintings on the gobelins, but it's beautiful. So this is raw silk on wool in several layers, in indigo blue and gray. We did also the mother on pearl uh, tapestries, this is also a VIP room, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, for board members, uh, all around uh, s um, fabrics from... And you can see uh, all the details. We did this is uh, the embassy in Berlin, Kohlhaas. Uh, this conference room was not uh, used for years. Uh, people could not sit there because of the, yeah, the two things, because of the sound and the shape was so in intimidating. So nobody, nobody dared to go inside. But it was, I mean, it was a, a very, very expensive building. So they asked us to solve the problem. And uh, we worked with an acoustic engineer and made, um, made uh, some sunshine here. And um, uh, we heard later that Rem uh, was very pleased with the work. But I thought I need to do something uh, floral. I mean, this is, it was so plain and I mean, it, sober is, is, is okay, but there is really nothing. It's, it, people working there, they call it the ice palace. So everybody was very unhappy. And uh, we made um, uh, four meter high, big, big, um, um, yeah, like a painting, but then in wool and silk. There's a very thick acoustic uh, layer that be behind them, also done with acoustic engineers. You see all the silk parts. This is a, a board meeting a room for DSM. It's a multinational um, in Holland. Um, and uh, we did the, the hangings, the fabrics for the windows and the table runners. It's a very strange room, but it's a chemical multinational, so the wallpaper also has something to do with this uh, company. Um, yeah, we're working together now with him. Uh, the CEO, he also ordered an, uh, an art piece for his home, and now he's uh, saying, please, girls, I like you so much, and what you are doing, and what you are standing for, can I help you? So uh, we thought, well, never, uh, why not? So we went to him, and he said, what do you want? Uh, and we want to we want to to make pieces for uh, important places. Uh, well, what are you meaning? And uh, well, for example, the United Nations. We would like to design for. Well, I know Ban, ban Ki Moon. I will introduce you. This uh, so uh, this week with uh, in uh, New York. We went to the United Nations. We were there with the Executive General, and we had a meeting. And now we're talking about uh, uh, yeah the possibilities to make a piece for this uh, important place on earth, I think, uh, 
politicians are coming there and they need to be inspired. And this year it's the year of the biodiversity. And so where are we standing for is try to make the best, uh, uh, do something with your natural heritage and uh, of course do something with your cultural heritage, but in, 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 in innovative uh, ways. So slowly we're starting the discussion. We had already three meetings this week with people, but of course the government has to give a present to the United Nations, etc., etc. It will be a long, long uh, journey, but uh, you never know. And uh, it is fantastic that this CEO is, uh, is uh, now um, with us. Um, he's introducing us also, but he was so um, disappointed about Copenhagen. So um, he's always, he's at the VO and he's everywhere and he's talking with other CEOs, companies, and now they're trying to make a step forward and of course you have to do uh, this by uh, multinationals, but they're really trying to make a new um, uh, movement also and maybe much more quicker than uh, the government can go. So it's a nice opportunity to talk together and he really thinks we are a symbol for something. So he's also, um, we are going to, to be uh, with him uh, together to, to have uh, presentations uh, by other uh, companies to, to, to tell the story and um, to show the beauty of uh, and the possibilities of, of people to do something uh, with, with with what is in our uh, environment, in fact, and about the chain, etc. This, yeah, this is a governmental palace in the Netherlands, in the south of the Netherlands. These are, uh, we did the, the ermine uh, translation, we made this wall covering very traditional. It was um, wrapped around a frame. It is uh, 11 meters high, it's really very, very high, but it's very royal and um, up front of this, of this uh, um, wall tapestry. There are three huge um, carpets in this in this marble building. You see details. You can see really the layering process, like painting with the silks. You can direct them any way you like. You can direct it in yeah. any way you like. Yeah. Yeah, the carpets we make. That's just very. Uh, it, they are really now more dynamic and more powerful than some years ago, but we, uh, because we uh, show the material. Uh, an ink spot <laughs> on the floor. It's a very big one. It's uh, for an architect in Holland. But also private residences we're doing in uh, the Netherlands, but also in, uh, this is what for people here in Los Angeles. Uh, translucent hangings. So you see more of the fabrics. This is all uh, hand uh, um, cut. cut with a scissor. Yeah, there is a uh, there is an, uh, a fabric here which is similar. You can see there is not one spot the same. Yeah, it's it's really um, it's a beautiful piece. A 18th century museum. Uh, chambers. They asked uh, us to put contemporary work inside, and you see, this is the China room. It really goes very natural in this room, and it, as as it, uh, yeah, if it always has been there, indigos. And then, of course, in the years we try to to have the, we have this direction by carpets, bigger installation. We could make felt uh, without seams, uh, seamless. So we could work with architects. And then uh, the first architect, he wanted to uh, do this and do that and that strike there and then that centimeter. And then uh, you have more trust and you, you get more projects that you have more freedom. So. Um, yeah, this was the first uh, yeah. uh, opportunity for a museum in Holland, the beautiful museum, the Pond, contemporary art. They, the director gave uh, two artists, myself and another uh, glass artist, this space. And we, um, we worked uh, at this installation for more than a year. I did uh, the, the, so the, yeah, the softness, the, the, the fabrics, and Mark Mulder uh, did the, the hardware. And it's, it's mapping out paradise is a title. And it's beautiful. Uh, you can meander through this installation and uh, having different um, atmospheres. The, the white, uh, when you're inside this white uh, chapel, you feel totally different and you experience the very dark cochineals or the, the red ones. 
and um, this this uh, Dutch uh, uh, artist Mark Mulls, he's a painter, but he also works in glass. And what was very strange, we uh, we worked on this exhibition for a year, and um, we saw each other, I think, three or four times this year. But we spoke every day. But then in a year, it, it the work flew over in each other. It was it was very strange, yeah, because then it was it was really like. Um, yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, playground, yeah. um, and we were very happy to have this opportunity. It was hundred, hundred of. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like and 150 all, of these. All different, eh? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So art pieces we're making for galleries, or uh, this is an underground gallery, in black and white we call them. I think they are very strong pieces, and you see the raw materials. Museums uh, buy uh, pieces. This is, a bar, this is a piece of the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, which is now closed for uh, several years <laughs> already. They also bought some hangings, translucent hangings. This was uh, recently finished for uh, Marcel Breuer's house. Uh, it's a wall tapestry um, with linière uh, in, in indigos. Uh, I thought it was a very difficult piece to make, but um, because uh, yeah, the, the composition of the lines comes so. I mean, the, the, this, this is very complex, and um, I worked on it for a long time. And this is all recently finished, also for a private house. Art pieces, three of them in different sizes and also different constellations. And then we try to continue. <laughs> we will. That was your mail, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
but for the Frisian Museum. We have a beautiful uh, project in, for the Frisian Museum. Uh, it will, it's by Hubert Jan Henkert, architect, and it will be open in 2013. And we are doing a big piece for the entrance hall. And like a sculpture. I'm going to try really there. Yeah. Since we have given that wall and f total freedom, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try making there really like a sculpture yeah. um, in this entrance hall. A lot of reliefs in it. Yeah. I mean, to me, the most obvious one w w uh, version would be to add metal to it. I wonder if you ever tried that. Metal? Metal rods. I don't know how that would work. But, yeah. We used metal, uh, metal organza, so organza with a met metal thread through it, and then it oxidates in time. Yes, we did that. Yes. The other question I had is, is, is the bubble wrap. Yes. I was very surprised to see the bubble wrap as a... As yeah. Uh, as a base, you just found that that works the best, is not it? Yes, why improve when it's working fine? <laughs> yeah, I had a question just about the, the natural qualities of wool that you talk about. I mean, and obviously the other day when you were talking um, at Todd and Billy's office about installing that big piece and then finding out you had to get treated for flame retardants because this country wouldn't allow you to install it without treating it, even though it passes an open flame test by the fire department in Holland. Um, I wonder if you ever have any other comments in that way that, you know, you were saying that the wool sometimes carries pieces of the fields or pieces of the trees that, they, that the sheep walk through and that sometimes it remains all the way mm -hmm. to the end of the fabric. And if, I don't know. We, put them in, we are putting them in now on purpose sometimes. <laughs> People <laughs> love this. Uh, <laughs> Grass and hay and uh, so, um, uh, that. yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the smell is very um, um, intense uh, with the dyed materials. I mean, you when you also you do not experience that in your environment. A, a fabric that you can, I mean, s smell. And you have never smelled something like that. I, I have. I, I had never smelled wells. I mean, this is very strange. Or indigo. I mean, uh, real indigo. It's you recognize it immediately. You have immediate this connotation. It's. I mean, for me, that's. It's. A, it's another dimension. Yes. Just so in that room that you were showing in the White House in in Holland, does it smell like lanolin? It smells like lanolin. <laughs> yes. Yes. The egg. Sophisticated lanolin. <laughs> <laughs> but what we like to uh, to to um, awaken the the the, sen the senses of people eh? that they the touch the sense of touching and the sense of smelling and the touch of looking for the beautiful colors. <coughs> that's that's an important thing. Um, I'm I'm curious about your pattern making. I guess the pattern techniques within the felt. Um, and whether that is like derived through like a process of seeing how the felt reacts, or how do how do you do that? Is it like watercolor? Do you use drawings, paintings? Uh, yeah, people ask this question a lot of time. Do you have paintings? But the last uh, art pieces you saw, it's really I cannot draw. I mean, this is for me. Uh, there is something between myself and the material. Uh, so my drawings are my fabrics, so I immediately start making drawings and there are scale models. This is how I work and, um, and then scale it up and make distance and then um, of course uh, at the point uh, the, um, I make some notes, but in fact we do not work with drawings, no. We always uh, work with architects and we make fabrics. So we, uh, sometimes we need a sketch and of course uh, we, we show the renderings or the maquettes. But we, mostly we make fabrics and the fabrics are our uh, sketches. And uh, mostly we make three kinds of uh, fabrics, uh, very common, uh, very uh, wild. Um, and then uh, the architect or the client can discuss uh, on the fabrics what they prefer. And yeah, so the fabrics are our uh, drawings, are the sketches. I have an, ex an, an example there. We have a new uh, assistant with us, and she's really from a, a very, um, um, how do you say, uh, 
her education is designing a lot by computer. So we had a commission f for a Dutch fashion designer making uh, fabric with with big dots or whatever. So she made uh, a pro proposal made by the computer, and it was so strange for me because uh, I could not translate that into the material. So when I'm starting, I mean, I, I have the table, and I'm go I'm going to go, and um, it was it was a language I could not. I couldn't understand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, also, I have a question. Um, are you working on multiple projects at a time, or when you have a huge scale project as the one as the Link at the Lincoln Center? I'm guessing that you only work at that in a period. Yes. Or when we do the like the Lincoln Center, it's such a huge project, and also for the concentration for everybody, uh, we do not do anything else. And uh, and furthermore. I'm in total isolation for months and keeping out everything because, um, I mean, uh, when you have very tight schedules and you, I mean, it's a lot of work also, you know, the spinning and the yarning and, I mean, you have to know, ex you have to know what you are doing and, I mean, waste uh, and experimenting is, is um, I, I cannot afford it in time because what is most expensive in our work is time. It takes a lot of time in in all these processes. And I think also uh, uh, with respect for the material, I, 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 I could not work on different, uh, I mean, I work on different projects at the same time, but not big scale projects. We do one at a time. Also for the people, totally focus. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I had a question specifically about the farming. You guys had acquired quite a bit of land to farm for the dyes. Is yes. it solely for your project? Because it seems like such a vast investment. It's such a large expanse of land that it... Oh, go ahead. Uh, that's true. Um, we are now uh, getting some support of our Dutch government, but mm. we think uh, this is not enough because uh, it's indeed it's very ex very expensive. Um, but everybody, I mean, Dutch uh, farmers, they uh, they want to go another direction. The land you see in our environment is only farmland, but the cows are, 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 are uh, I mean, in stock. So this agricultural uh, policy uh, in Holland uh, has really grown out of proportion. So there has to be a ch big, big change. So these innovate, innovative crops are, I mean, the, the farmers we spoke, they say, you are most welcome to come. We want this land different to be, um, uh, yeah, treated. So um, the farmers, they, they, uh, they are in line. So uh, are you interested in generating that as a separate opportunity to to create natural dye? Exactly, it's like its own company. Yes. yes, and then you have yours. So you have access to this, but it's it's for yours, but it's a universal project for. It. We're going to grow, uh, you have one year plans, but three year plans. So what we would like to do is be an inspiration for, for other people to, 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 to show people you can, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can grow different crops. Right. And um, uh, in Holland, we had a bi big, big disease uh, a few months ago with the goats. I mean, uh, and last year we had it with, with I think, uh, pigs. with <laughs> pigs. And the year before we had it with, uh, with chickens. So there is not an animal in Holland anymore. <laughs> Because, I mean, there is only overproducing and there is now a big, big political change. Be right. I mean, it has to stop. Right. We have a small country, but we have um, towers. I mean, plans for towers where pigs are being installed. I mean, um, it's, uh, this, is n this should not happen. Right. So what we, would, what we try to show in, in a, in a, on a micro scale is that you can... If you are in, uh, it's it's very. I mean, but it's all about money and yeah. and uh, but bringing beautiful colors in the world. I mean, that's also another thing. And um, so we. Um, this is this is what we try to do um, with the land. And your flock. Are you breeding your flock since they're such a rare breed? Are you continuing that line? Yes, we. Um, we we control the the, the 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 I mean yeah it the, there is also a also there for it there is a plan and uh, you have done you have then one uh, male uh, or two males who are that year they are in super condition so <laughs> <laughs> and that way you control it a bit because but Holland is very 
uh, very small and uh, and uh, they work on dikes and they work on natural landscape so but we are a bit limited because of the space in Holland yeah I have a question sort of a corollary to that question and, and, and that's about the sort of s the seasonal aspect of, of, of what you do in other words are um, the things that you make are they related to to the kind of passing time, for example, when the sheep's wool is ready to be cut or when a particular set of, of plants are ready to be extracted for their dyes. Are there times you can make things in yeah. other seasons? I guess. It's a very Yes, yeah, very good question. Um, for example, with the, sh with, the, with the wool, it's not a problem. We can st you can stock it for two years, three years. But um, with the, um, for example, St. John's word, when you harvest this, uh, I th let's say, 20th of June, um, then it will ha have a totally different color than you would harvest this at the 21st of June. So s now we're doing this ourselves. You can harvest in this when the, the plant or the or the the root is in, this, in, this, in the most yeah potent um, has the most potential. So also with the with the matter, um, uh, it takes three years to grow. But there were, were experiments that people tried. Let's do it in two years. But you have a totally different quality of coloring. So uh, in in that sense, I mean, uh, uh, it's 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 yeah, it's depending also on on time. But but uh, it, we have a very crazy story with the sheep. We, we have no such. Uh, we have not a lot of brown sheep. So uh, when they order a brown carpet, you have yeah. to be. <laughs> you have to wait two or three <laughs> you years. Have to be early in the year. <laughs> Otherwise, we have no brown grand heave carpet. <laughs> and we had two sheep who were sleeping together, and it was not the uh, it was not uh, um, the not the same uh, species. So they had there was a small sheep then. And uh, with a very strange curl. So in Milano at the Salon de Mobile, we had this. We, we bought this. We sold, sold this. Uh, uh, sold scarves. this scarves. So there were women. We saw it immediately. Oh, this is a beautiful scarf. And then uh, I wanted two. I wanted two. But then we only had one sheep with this curl. <laughs> so they had to wait for uh, for a year. It's very exclusive. Uh, yeah. But th this this can happen. Yeah. Yeah. is fashion. Um, had you um, thought of um, making the felt, cutting it up and restitching it back together to make more I do not understand. I cannot hear you. Since your background is fashion, mm -hmm. have do you thought of um, stitching your felt together to make more sculptural pieces or is it important to you just to keep it in the, the, the flat plane, even though it's very textured? Um... For me, um, that's that's when um, I would I, I would like to go into the yeah, I don't know how to explain it very well, but I would like to go into the depth, exploring this this material and going further and further. Stitching would be for me another thing to think about. So um, I mean, I'm not ready with this yet. And but uh, the the feeling of, of sculpturing that is what I yeah more in a natural way making forms or molding it that I can imagine I would really love to do at, at when there is a possibility. But um, but uh, everything extra is is for me a burden. So or something uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I have, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really exploding because there's so much I haven't done yet here, so I am um, a bit withdrawn with that. Yeah. yeah. Hi. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about, um, I guess, your role as an interior designer in adding sort of tactility to spaces. You were mm -hmm. saying the first thing that you mentioned that caught my interest was about the girls who couldn't touch the wool because it has too much texture and they didn't know how to mm -hmm. deal with that. And then also, of course, the Rem Cool House room where you were adding something to that. So if you could just talk a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, but what I uh, what I very often hear is that that it does many things to people. I mean, uh, uh, that is healing. There are healing environments, creating healing environments in the, in 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 all these dimensions. It can be in hospitals, but 
Yeah, we have people who want to be buried in my fabrics. I mean, <laughs> it has happened uh, because it's their own. They, they, they feel um, um, yeah, comfortable. Yeah, com yeah, now comf yeah, yeah, or it gives comfort. Yeah, they um, it consoles. Yeah, that it's uh, consolation. Yeah, and uh, often I think it's a material which is so basic. I mean, it's, it's, it's the first material. It's the first color of human. Uh, it's it's there is nothing. It is so honest. I think that this is the st the, 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 st the strength of the material. That this is it. I have nothing to hide. This is it. <laughs> Naked. Yeah. <laughs> And this is also what you see when people come to our space, uh, because we are not. Um, this is not fancy. This is what this is what there is. So you see, really, people. You see, really. Ah, oh, I do not have to do this because that's what we do all day. So you need nothing. And people really, when they come to our space, they need. Uh, I mean, it's an effort coming because it's a long on a rough one and a half hour from Amsterdam. But they take time, and it's really more than a fabric. I think yes. Okay, I think I uh, uh, want to leave some time here, maybe quickly for people to come up and, and really touch and, and look and smell uh, a little bit more. Uh, thank you so much uh, for doing this.